Kathy, Kathy, good to see you. Gillian, Jane, Matt, good to see you. Nathan, good to see some names I recognize. Tracy, Mark, Steve, awesome. Well, thank you very much for being here. Jump on in and say hi to Arthur. It's uh, 5 a.m. in the morning where he is in the world. So he needs, uh, he needs, he needs some love here. <laughs> here you go. More morning. Damien in sunny Spain. Yeah, Jane's giving you good, good love and coffee vibes to you, Arthur. There you go. Awesome. Hey, Mark, do you want to get started? Yeah. All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so this is being recorded. So if you have to jump on out or jump on and come back in at any point, you can do. We, we are going to take this and we're going to turn it into some cool uh, additional training afterwards as well. So first and foremost, thank you to everybody who is uh, who is with us live. Um, what we're going to do and what, what I've wanted to do for ages is work with with Arthur and, and Stay Fight because I absolutely love the business, love the brand, love the idea. Uh, we've had many chats sort of behind the scenes and it's cool that we're able to to sort of bring our calendars together to do to do this. People that are with us right now, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to tune in with us. Um, both Stay Fight and Boost Lee, as you're going to find out more about Stay Fight in a second, are all about direct bookings. And obviously we've got Mr. Damien Sheridan, uh, founder of the Book Direct Show, in uh, the audience as well, which is awesome. And we're all here because, you know, we want to help hosts like yourself uh, cut down on over-reliance on, on the OTAs. And StayFi has got such a cool tool and product that will help with this. And obviously Boostly does what Boostly does. So um, what we're going to do shouldn't last no more than sort of 35, 40 minutes. Um, we're going to go through some really cool tactics. We'll talk about diet bookings, why, and obviously we'll go for a few things. Um, but for the, to get started with before Arthur introduces himself, if you just take a second just to give Arthur a little bit of context of, of, of who you are in the chat. So use the Zoom chat. Uh, we, we can all see it. I believe we can all see it. Let us know where you are in the world, your business, you know, how, you know, what's your ratio of direct bookings to, to OTA bookings and like your biggest pain point when it comes to sort of getting more direct bookings. That would be an awesome place to start. So Arthur, do you want to just, the, the, the floor is yours, buddy. Uh, I'll let you introduce yourself and then we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, so my name is Arthur Kolker. I'm the founder of StayFi. Uh, my background is in digital marketing and branding. Um, and actually got into the short-term rental industry by doing marketing consulting for short-term rental companies. Um, and that's really how StayFi was born. So uh, I was developing the brand and digital marketing strategy for a company called Heirloom out of Boston. Um, and we found their, you know, one of their biggest challenges for generating more direct bookings was they had very little guest data, um, obviously because the OTAs don't share a lot of guest information with you guys and um, whether it's the booker or the other travelers staying in these properties, you know, they didn't have a lot of guest data to market to. Um, so we want to develop a solution that seamlessly collected information from all the guests, no matter what OTA they booked on um, and help them remarket to it, uh, to those guests. And that's how StayFi was born. Um, Yeah, and then so a little more about Stay Five, founded in 2018, really with the mission of helping short-term rental operators become less dependent on OTAs, just like Mark spoke about. Um, and the way we do that is we use captive Wi-Fi splash pages to help you collect data. So it's just like the same experience of logging into the internet at a hotel, a coffee shop, an airport. We provide that same type of service to short-term rental companies all over the world, and that helps them collect and get their brand in front of 80 plus percent of all guests staying in the properties. And then because we're a Wi-Fi tool, there's all other sorts of great Wi-Fi related benefits around connectivity, occupancy alerting, outage alerting that you know reduce customer service calls when it comes to Wi-Fi related issues. Although in this presentation, we're really gonna be focusing on different marketing strategies on how to take guest data and drive more brand awareness, bookings, and also other kind of ancillary rep revenue during and after the stay. And then Mark, you can talk a little bit more about Boostly's history. 
Yeah, hundred percent. So I think a lot of people in the room live with us know uh, about Boostly, but for those who don't, and those watching on the replay who don't, so Boostly was founded in 2016 uh, with a mission to help one million hosts uh, and property management companies cut down on their over reliance on on the OTAs. Um, I like to say my sort of elevator pitch, if you call it that, is we give the the tools, the tactics, and the confidence to increase your direct bookings. And um, as of yesterday. Oh, as of today, sorry, the 4th of May, uh, our website, so Boostly websites is a big part of, of, of our brand and what we're doing here. So our, our, our WordPress websites, as we call them, they have generated over £500,000 in new direct bookings uh, for our clients in 2020 alone, which, which is amazing. I'm on a goal to get to 1 million this year, and we're already ahead of, of that target, which is awesome. A little bit about me, if you don't mind moving to the next slide, Arthur. Um, so yeah, uh, best-selling author, Amazon author this year with the book Direct Playbook, which is uh, which is epic, as you can see it there. Um, hosted the award-winning Boostly podcast, nominated for a Shorties Award, which is epic, which is happening in London in a few weeks, and in uh, Nashville. Uh, so in June, I'm going to be in Nashville speaking at a SDR World Summit uh, event, which is which I'm really looking forward to because the 4th of June will mark 20 years to the day that I first touched down in America um, when I was uh, in a previous life as a soccer coach. So it's really exciting to going back to Nashville, going back to Tennessee, where it all began many, 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 many years ago. Um, and it's so cool to see so many people in the chat here saying hi, uh, people saying uh, welcome, and, and also as well in the chat, sort of sharing their stories. So if you're coming into this late, if you're coming into this if this webinar late, please do jump in the chat and give a little background about yourself so we know more about you. And, and the cool thing for me, and which is why I really want to do this with our friends, specifically StayFi, is that I was messing around with a technology like this back in 2012, our family business. Uh, it didn't and it wasn't ready for the short-term rental industry then. And this is why it's so cool to me to see something like StayFi now available, not just for tea rooms or for restaurants or for hotels. This is available to everybody in our industry. And it's so awesome to see the results that everybody can, can get by uh, watching this webinar and putting into practice what we're going to talk to you about. So if you go to the next slide, please, Arthur, we've got some cool little trends. If you want to just touch upon what, what, what we're looking at here, please. Yeah, so I think, you know, despite the efforts we're making, the reality is industry-wide, uh, direct bookings is an increasingly small share of overall bookings. Um, and Airbnb continues to grow their market share and become more dominant in the space. I know this is just the, the US and I know we have a lot of UK folks um, on this particular webinar. So, um, you know, obviously could be different in different markets, but this is definitely a general overall trend. And one of the main reasons why this is happening is during COVID and after COVID, there have been a lot of new individuals renting short-term rentals for the first time. And obviously since Airbnb has kind of the brand dominance is like the Kleenex of the space, let's say, where people are going directly to their website, um, it's attracting a lot of new individuals to rent for the first time, which is fantastic. Um, but because of that, everyone else's share is shrinking. Um, and so one of the key things just to kind of remember is uh, OTAs are always great, especially for first time guest acquisition. Uh, but the key thing is you really never want to have those guests book you again through an OTA. And that's one of the things we're going to talk about, how to make sure we turn um, bookers or people that come to your property for the first time, make sure that they're coming back to you again directly in the future. Lovely. So um, what we're going to do over the course of the, the rest of this presentation, my sort of angle is why direct bookings, my, my sort of angle will be um, the power of a, of a website and obviously getting people to that website. And then Arthur's going to jump in and sort of show the next part. So what we want to do, we want to, want to give you kind of a, a roadmap on what you can be doing to not only generate that direct booking or generate a booking or what you can do afterwards to make sure that if that guest was ever to come back or referral basis, et cetera, they'll be able to attract direct bookings at any stage of the process, which is, which is really cool. Um, so the power of a proper direct booking website, that's what we've got here. So why do you need first and foremost, a proper direct booking website? And what do I mean when I say a proper entire booking website. Now, what I would love, we've got so many people in the chat. Um, so from everybody that's in here right now, just give me a simple yes or no. Do you have live right now a direct booking website? 
I ask this question a lot and it is amazing to me still to this day, how many people could turn around and say, and say no, which is why it just gives me more power to sort of keep doing webinars like this, where we can encourage more and more people to, uh, to get one. Nathan's put no, but we've got one on the way. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's a good one for, for Nathan. So what I mean by a proper direct booking website. Now, if anybody has read the book, my book, the book direct play, but you'll know what I talk about when I say a proper one, because there's so many, um, solutions that are out there at the moment. If you've got a property management software, they give you a free one. Uh, for example, there's there's solutions like Wix and, and and Squarespace and Weebly on and all the other ones that are out there. But if you want a proper direct booking website, if you want one that's really going to um, make a dent, make an impact, you need to have a WordPress website. I think Damien will be able to give me a, a more accurate stat, but it's somewhere between 60 and sort of 70% of all the websites in the world are built on a, on a WordPress CMS. So if you're going to have a, if you're going to go for the effort of getting yourself a website, if you want to have a direct booking one, that's going to build the trust and the brand out there, it needs to be a WordPress one. If you want to go look at some examples, I just very quickly put together four examples of a proper WordPress website in action, uh, vectorstays.com, junglehouse.org, stay-bright.com, and livelyproperties.com.au. Uh, you can go and check them out if you want to see an example of a, of a, of a WordPress website in, in action. Now, if you want to go back to that lovely slide next, please, Arthur, that would be lovely. The one, um, if you build it, they will come or he will come. So here's a little question, and I'm going to see who's the movie buffs that we have amongst us in the uh, in the zoom room right now can you tell me the question is can you tell me what movie is this quote from let's see if we've got oh nathan straight away field of dreams amazing now um if you build it he or they will come is something that so many business owners fall for the trap of and you know I'm definitely one for this. And, and I can definitely say that I fell for this when I first created Boostly. I was like, right, I'm going to create a business. I'm going to do this. And people are going to come flocking and it's, it's going to be amazing. And it's the same with hospitality. You, you go out, you go and get your property, you spend all of your money, you spend all of your budget, getting the property ready, getting all of the things in place and, and doing all of the jazz. And when it's, when you, you, you put the post up online to say, Hey, we're open. And then you just go, right, let the bookings fall in. And unfortunately, um, that's not always the case. This is where the likes of Airbnb and Booking.com and Verbo, and more importantly, like Arthur said, Airbnb, really sort of stand out because they've built a whole business model and a marketing message of, listen, in a couple of minutes, you can put your property on our site and it's live and, and, it's, and it's bookable. And because we're in an industry of hospitality, which is so in demand, you know, even right now, with all the things that are going on in the world, it's still a very in-demand industry. You can simply put your business, one or two pitches on Airbnb, and at the right time of the year, you can pretty much guarantee to, to get revenue coming in. Now, it's a blessing and a curse that, because it's a blessing because there's no other industry that I know. Like when I first created Boostly, there's no website that I could go to list my services that would be pretty much guaranteed to bring in in, in revenue. So it's good in that respect, but this is, is a curse in the other ex, uh, example is because when you, when something is so easy, and I'm sure so many hosts in here who are so, who were so reliant on Airbnb or booking.com, it is so easy to get revenue. You just become over-reliant and complacent because it goes, you know, it's all right. I'll just leave it on there and I'll get bookings. With the pandemic, and with so many people now coming into this industry, not so much the guests, but like property people, it's so easy now to get started in this industry because of, of what has happened. It's not like what it was 2019, 2018. It is so easy to get started. So many people are coming to, into it and so many people are now flooding the market. And so the reason why we're doing this today and the reason why it's a really important message to spread to everybody and for you to take home and to sort of spread it around as well is that the businesses that really pay attention to their marketing, to building their brand, building their trust, having a direct booking website, having the tools that we're going to talk about today in place and to start putting these practices on, 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 a, on a daily or weekly basis, you are the ones that are going to not only survive, but thrive on the other end. So when I say here, if you build it, they will come. That's, that's not the case. What you need to be doing is you need to be making sure that you're putting these tactics these principles 
and these these core beliefs in process so you can build a direct bookings business. And Arthur's has got some slides coming up now, um, which will really help you get these core principles in place. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, those are all great points about building a sustainable, resilient business, especially, you know, uh, that can survive downturns. And I think it's easy when demand is through the roof and everybody's getting bookings to become complacent. And it's really about how do you set up the systems today so that you have a sustainable long-term business that can survive a downturn or a decrease in demand or a flood in supply or anything that the market has coming to throw at us. Um, and so now we're going to talk about some specific tactics that you can employ today um, that are relatively straightforward and easy to do. Um, they're going to help build that direct booking engine. And you can think of it like an engine. So over time, as you kind of add more fuel to it, it will just start producing more and more ROI um, as you get more and more guests into kind of your contact database. Um, and kind of central piece of that is going to be email marketing, which is what I'm going to talk about first, um, since it's kind of the gold standard of how to reach out to both prospective first-time bookers, as well as repeat or past guests that you've had stay with you. Um, and it's consistently rated by marketers as their highest ROI channel. Um, so just kind of jumping into, um, you know, all sorts of email marketing tools out there. And, you know, at StayFi, we don't have a favorite one. And in fact, we integrate with all the kind of major ones that you're probably familiar with. Most popular one in this industry is definitely MailChimp. And they have great tools to both set up email automations, which is what I'm going to talk about, as well as kind of one-time newsletters. Um, and the great thing about StayFi, because we are doing Wi-Fi collection of emails, um, we're collecting emails during the stay. So that means guests are in the property at the point of collection, which means you can automate communication to them. That's both relevant to the stay. So if you do sell other things to guests or have upsells, it's a great opportunity to automate marketing to those guests to feature those upsells or extending the stay or other ways to reach you uh, during the course of their stay to buy things, as well as follow up with them after I'm on how to rebook the property. And so I'm gonna talk a lot about automation in this presentation, since that's kind of the first step in setting up emails, in our opinion, is to set up automated series. Um, and what that means in practice is you can ensure all guests get a series of branded email communications from you, um, but it's something you only need to set up one time and it will automatically just get sent to all guests. And that way, if you don't have, let's say the expertise or knowledge or background or bandwidth, which is a big issue in this industry to be sending weekly or monthly newsletters, you can set up something one time that's being sent to everybody who stays with you or interacts with you on your website. I just want to quickly jump in and just say, but one, one key word that you said where it was automation, because we're all busy hospitality owners. We've got so many things going on and there's not many things that you can do in this business that you can pretty much set and forget. But when you really do crack email and automation, it, it really is a game changer. And, and I think the best sort of example to give you is if you've ever been and stayed at a big hotel chain, like a Marriott or a Hilton, or if you've ever been to Las Vegas and you stayed at one of their casinos, they are so on the ball with this. And in the past, you would always think, well, I could never replicate that for my short-term rental business or for my small business. But now we have the tools and we have the things in place and we've got the software and, and, the, and the hardware, but which means we can, we can finally do this. And it's not something that you're going to go, oh, I've got to hire a member of staff to do this, or it's going to take me forever to do this. The cool thing about what we'll show you is it can be really a, a set and forget. Yeah. And obviously the first, before that, um, the number one you know, first step is to obviously collect guest information. And there's a few places to do that. Um, number one is on your website. Um, and I know Mark can maybe talk about this and all of those tools I have have different widgets and ability to kind of place uh, collection points on your website, do like a give get. Um, because if you are driving traffic to your site, whether it's through backlinks marketing that you're doing other places. Um, every time you pay or invest in getting somebody or a prospective booker to your website, it kind of increases the value of doing that when you also collect their email. Because even if they don't book in that moment, if you can collect their email while they're on your site, that gives that kind of transaction 
some value back for your business. Then I'll talk about state by current guests. And then obviously there are some other places like Facebook or your PMS where you can also find valuable guest information. Um, when you collect data, when we talk about automation, it's kind of like you need to have a relevant message. Um, and so whether they're from your website or they're currently staying with you, you wanna cater that message to the stage the guest is in during their journey with you. As you can imagine, depending on the point of collection, different messages are gonna be relevant. Um, and that's something that you wanna keep in mind uh, because that's how you're gonna get the highest open rate and click-through rate with your marketing is it has to be relevant to where that guest is during the journey, whether it's pre-stay, during stay, post-stay, or they're just a prospective guest looking to book. Collecting emails on your direct booking site. Um, I would say, you know, the most best way to do this is through some type of give get with pop-ups and website forums. So this is a great example we have from one of our customers where on their direct booking website, where they're investing in sending traffic to, they have this pop-up where you'll get a guidebook as well as a hundred dollars off your next day when you enter this email. And MailChimp provides all the tools you need to set this up. So they have a pop-up builder where you can build this. Then they give you this piece of code that you insert on your website, which I'm sure Mark could help with. You just insert it into the header. And then this will automatically just pop up on your website. And then to make, they make it really easy to say, like, create a follow-up email, where then once somebody does submit their email here, it automatically will send this email to them with the information you want to provide. So that's a great kind of encapsulation of how you can create an email capture and response through MailChimp. Um, which will facilitate sending this information to the prospective guest on your website and something, again, you only have to set up once and then it's automatically being sent until you want to change whatever the promotion is or if you do want to send additional information to the guest, you can even set up multiple emails to be sent into that series. So I don't know, Mark, if you've seen like any particularly yeah, was, successful ways of capturing information on your websites. I was, I was going to say, um, I can see Kathy saying, oh, I hate pop-ups. <laughs> and it's, and, it, and the cool thing is you don't have to have this as a pop-up as such. Um, a part of Boostly websites, what we do on standard for all of our new templates is that we have a really nice, really elegant looking, super simple form that is built into the homepage of the website. So it's not a pop-up. It's not flying at you. It's not flashing or anything like that. But the, the main thing is, is that you've got to give um, like the give get, you've got to like the juice is worth the squeeze. And some really good examples that I have seen is um, something which is saying, <clears throat> would you like our top five hidden uh, favorite places to go and check out in your town or location? Because if somebody is visiting your website, if somebody's on your homepage, they are obviously interested in coming to stay in your area, in your location. So if you can offer you know, the, the the top five secret places or the top five recommended places that our guests like to go visit in, in your town or city, that's the give get. And all I have to do is we have to give up the email to get this. And for, for people that are thinking, well, that's all well and good, but you're talking about the email automation. I don't know what to create. Well, those of you that are part of Team Boostly, you've got literally in the vault, you've got it all copy ready to go. You just have to copy paste personalize into your MailChimp account. So it's all there ready to do. It's just connecting the dots. And this is a really cool way of having that give get, having that form on your website that doesn't have to be a flashy pop-up. Now flashy pop-ups and all those things, they may annoy you, but they work. They work massively. Otherwise these big marketing companies wouldn't use them. But the cool thing is, is that you get, you get a couple of options. So if you want to go see some in action, if you want to go see some in, 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 in real world examples, go look at the Boostly uh, portfolio, Boostly website portfolio, and you, and you can go on there and see them. But it, it's so easy to be done. And it, like I say, it's a set and forget. Uh, yeah, so obviously website key to capture any information there, because if you're paying or you're investing in sending people to your website, you definitely want to help monetize that traffic and cash in your email is going to do that. Um, then of course, StayFi, which is the in-home experience. So this is an example of what a captive portal looks like. It's very similar if you've ever been to a Starbucks or a lot of main brand hotels or an airport where you connect to the Wi-Fi. Um, and then this will load automatically on your device. And then you enter your name and email here. And we validate all emails with a tool called Zero Bounce. So guests can't enter in fake emails. So we make sure every email we collect is valid and won't bounce uh, when you do email them through a tool like MailChimp. 
Um, and what's great about this is we'll capture emails from everybody during this day, pretty much who connects to the Wi-Fi. Um, and then we have a bunch of ways to kind of reach out to them after the fact. So I'll talk about, I talked about validation. Um, so it's not just email. So we'll talk, talk about email automation, like how to then set up a series to contact people who are currently staying with you. Then I'll talk to you about two other channels, which are definitely worth looking into. One is SMS marketing, uh, which people have different thoughts on, but we do have an SMS marketing tool within Stay5. And I'll show how that works. And then social media marketing, which is a super interesting one. Um, and I think a lot of people get intimidated by this one because it's definitely a little more of a hill to climb to first set up versus SMS and email. Um, but anybody can set up Facebook ads, which covers Facebook and Instagram. And they even do advertising on other websites as well. Um, and you can set up very highly targeted campaigns that are relatively inexpensive to run. So one example would be is you can, for instance, set up relatively easily within Facebook an Instagram ad that's shown to everybody who's currently staying in your properties or recently stayed with them through StayFi. Um, and that's a way if you are investing in social media to instead of advertising to, let's say, a random demographic based audience, to advertise to a very specific audience of people who have stayed or are aware of your brand. Um, and that can get a lot of helpful engagement during the stay where people start tagging you in their posts and become aware of your social media presence during the stay if they do love your property. Um, now, this is an example of an email automation from MailChimp. So within MailChimp, they have a tool called Automation. In other email marketing tools, it's sometimes called a drip campaign. So there's different names, but they're all functionally the same thing. And it's where you're sending a series of emails to a specific audience. And so in this case, this is an audience of people that have uh, logged in through StayFi. So we know that they're in the property. And this particular customer is in Fernie, British Columbia, which is a ski destination in Canada. Um, and in this case, when the guest logs in, they will get a email immediately from Fernie, which is basically a welcome message that says, hey, you may have booked us through an OTA, but you know we're the brand that actually managed your experience and is why you really love and enjoy your stay, which is a really key message because people say they booked an Airbnb, but we know that Airbnb has nothing really to do with the stay other than getting you the booking. Um, so you kind of want to keep reinforcing that uh, message over and over again because guests don't intuitively maybe understand who actually runs this rental and why their experience is really from the brand and not from Airbnb. Um, and then in this case, they actually send a really quick follow-up with a bunch of upsell options, like how to extend the stay. I know they have partnerships with some like ski rental shops and like grocery delivery in this town. So they kind of feature all their local partners, which is an awesome way to kind of both add value to the guest stay as well as generate some additional revenue. Then after about seven days, they send an email that asks them to review the listing on Google. So Google, Facebook are kind of the two places where you can ask anybody to review. So obviously OTA reviews are really important, but only the booker can review you on the OTA. Uh, but the other six people that stayed in the rental that had a great experience, uh, you can get a valuable review from them too. Google is a great one because it actually really helps you in your search marketing results if your business page has a lot of five-star reviews and that will appear there when people are searching for your rental business or a rental company in the area that you operate in. Um, sorry, I think I skipped a page here. Yep. Uh, and then uh, after 30 days, they actually send another email about rebooking Fernie uh, and different year round activities or reasons why to stay there. And they feature some events that Fernie has developed to really bolster uh, tourism outside of the peak ski season, because that's where really where they need to get more bookings is in what they call it their shoulder season there, because obviously a ski destination is super seasonal. Uh, so they really push messaging around how to, why you should come revisit during the non-ski season. Um, then in a few months later, they actually send a text only email. And you may be wondering, why would I want to send an email that's only text? Kind of the one of the key things, since most of the people, or I'd say 50 or 60% of people who submit their email will use Gmail. And in Gmail, you typically have a promotions, a social and a main folder. Most, the way the promotions email folder works is when Gmail sees an email with a lot of 
photos, they think it's from an e-commerce or another kind of like direct consumer brand, they automatically kind of put that in the promotions folder and things in the promotions folder have a typically have a lower open rate than things in the main folder. Yeah. Um, so when you have a text only email that you send out, it's much more likely to be sent in the main folder and as a result have a much higher open rate. Uh, so, so in this example, I think there, these emails with images typically have like a 15 to 20% open rate while this text only email is like in the 30, 35% range. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily say send only emails that are only text and only emails that are only image. They really work well together when you kind of integrate them into one flow. Um, so in this case, Ryland is sending an email in the series. He's the owner of this company where it appears as if Ryland has written this directly to the previous guest. Um, so it seems like Ryland just typed this out in his own Gmail account and shot it off to you as the guest. And that's going to really have a higher open rate and engagement rate. And I know from this email that people reply directly to it and say like, oh, hey, I do want to come back and ski next February. Like, what do you have available? And then one of his uh, sales kind of associates takes the conversation from there. Um, so I definitely recommend integrating a text only email into a series like this. And then I know they actually sent up some additional emails uh, within the series. I think they sent like a one like, oh, it's been nine months since you stayed. Do you want to book again, like an anniversary trip? And you can imagine you can set up five, six, 10 emails in a series like this so that you kind of set it and forget it, like Mark talked yeah. about. So you can invest one time in creating a great series. And then you know every single guest that stayed with you will get that content over time. Mm -hmm. And the one, I just want to quickly jump in, and this is the one thing that I really love about this technology and what Stayfy have, have created and, and are doing is because this email right here, normally if you were just going to use your PMS and the automated emails that are part of that, that will just go to the person who has made the booking. That just goes to one person. But as we all know, that those of you that have got maybe a larger rental unit, which sleeps six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or even four, five or six, however many, there's going to be more people in that party that could be a potential future booking for you. And the power of this and the power of Stayify is that this will not just go out to the booker. This can go out to everybody in, in that party, because let's say two or three friends of friend groups have come together, right? The booker may never come back or never need to come back to the area, but two of the other two parties, the other two friend groups may want to come back or may know somebody want to come back. So this is the power of it. This is not just going out to one person. This is going out to several people. And again, um, email automations, you, you know, my personal preference, I love a text-based only email because it looks like you're personally handwriting it to somebody. But like what Arthur says, if you can mix it up with a picture, text only, it, it never hurts. Okay. So Bear that in mind when you're looking at this and when you're looking at Stayfy and you're looking at this technology that, that, that we're talking about, especially with what we're going to move on to next, it's not just sending to one person, it's sending to the whole party. And the way that they do that is because, you know, the give and get, you're giving up your Wi-Fi, they're giving up the Wi-Fi, they're giving up their email. So it's awesome. Yeah. I say like when we've done kind of studies with customers over who's rebooking, more than half of the bookings come from the initially non-primary guest. Wow. So we know we see you know, more than half of the bookings are coming from the non-initial booker because often the decision maker and the booker are different people or they're unrelated. You know, you host 10 friends in a rental, you know, you know, the other nine people might want to come back to your destination. So that's, again, a really key point. And I think a lot of times because the PMSs are so booker centric, like all the communication in a PMS and all the automations they set up, which are fantastic, are all oriented around the booker. And then sometimes we just kind of, the other nine people just kind of get lost or we don't think about them as much. Um, so just important to kind of bring them back into the fold and make sure that they have a chance to interact with your brand too, because otherwise any messages you're sending are just getting sent to one person. And if you do have upsells or have opportunities to extend the stay, uh, those are things you want to get in front of the non-primary uh, guests during the course of the stay. Uh, now I'm going to branch into text marketing. And we actually launched this last month within Stayfy, so it's still a relatively new tool for us. Um, and the reason we did it is, well, all of our customers have, or have for the most part, an email tool like MailChimp that works great. Uh, very few had a text marketing tool. Uh, so we actually built one within Stayfy. And the reason why is text marketing, you know, I'd say it's kind of the inverse of email. So email, you're going to get really high opt-in rates, but then a relatively low open rates, like 15 or 20% would be a good average. 
With text marketing, you're going to get lower opt-in rates because it's a little more invasive and less people may be willing to receive these. But for those who do opt in, you're going to get like a 98 plus percent open read and engage rate and click through rate uh, because just about every SMS you sent will get read. Um, so within our kind of text marketing tool, there are different campaigns you can send. So we have three that we launched with. One's called a welcome campaign. One's called just like a bulk marketing message. And one's called a review campaign. To kind of go over the difference, the welcome campaign is automatically sent uh, to the guest after they opt in and log in through the splash page. And in this campaign, you can see here in this example, we have these kind of weird, if you look where these percentage signs are, these are uh, merge fields. And what that basically means, it will insert dynamic relevant content in the message to this guest. So in this case, it will insert their first name, the property name that they're in, which we're grabbing from Stafi, as well as this customer has a guidebook, that digital guidebook for each property through like a company like Touchday or Hostfully, there are several out there. Um, and you actually can have a guidebook URL for each property within Stafi, and then you're sending to the guest the link to the guidebook. And you can also send the link to your website or a link to the listing of the property on the website. Uh, so lots of different options to kind of personalize this text message that's being sent to every guest upon login. Then of course we have a tool where you can send out a message to all your guests that have uh, ever opted in to SMS. So a few hundred or a thousand over the course of time. Um, and you can send you know, anything you want to them, including um, the links again to the property that they stayed in in the past. Uh, so if you are running any promotions or have announcements, like I always love like, oh, we launched a new property. That's like a really good announcement to send to guests. Or if you're running a seasonal promotion because of, uh, you know, it's your slower season and you want to drive more demand uh, during that particular time of year, you know, you can make sure you can mirror anything that you send an email. You can also send in text to everybody who's ever opted in. And then finally, we have this really cool review campaign widget, uh, which you could automatically send after X number of days someone stayed with you. And in there, we kind of pre-screen the guest review where they rate you one to five stars. And then if they do rate you five stars or above, uh, you can then send them to Facebook or Google or to your own website to leave a review. Uh, and that way you're, and if they rate you less than five stars, you can solicit feedback from them, of course, and see that feedback within StayFi. Uh, and that way you're sending more five-star reviews or collecting five-star reviews from the non-booked guests um, who did stay with you and logged into StayFi. Here's an example of like what that looks like within StayFi. So you can see here, these are everybody that left for any director review recently. You know, they have mostly five stars, a four star, and they have one star. In the one star, you can see the property they were in and the relevant comment and date and who the guest was. And this is again, a great way to kind of like deflect people leaving you negative reviews from a public facing forum because you're giving them an opportunity to leave you a negative review and provide that feedback. And hopefully you can respond to it and get back to them before they go somewhere publicly to leave you a negative review, right? So you kind of want to get ahead of that. So they, they have a place to kind of give you their thoughts, but they're not necessarily doing it in a public forum first. Um, and then of course, for five-star reviews, you can see who here clicked on Facebook to leave a review there. And then the last one here is Facebook, Instagram retargeting. This is kind of what it could look like in practice. Um, so in we have a whole blog post about how to set this up. It's too much to go through in this presentation here, um, but it leads you step-by-step step to how to set up a Facebook and Instagram campaign through the Facebook ads tool. Uh, and the key thing here, I'll just talk about how this works in practice. And I'm sure you've all experienced where you go on a website and then you start seeing ads for that particular product in your social media feeds. And the way they do that is something called a Facebook pixel, which can be placed on your own website or in your StayFi splash page. And basically Facebook says, hey, anybody who's loaded this pixel on their browser, so anybody who's visited your website, we can put them in an audience and target them with ads. And you can pick how many days you, know, you want them to live in that audience, whether it's 30, 90, 180, I think the max is maybe around a year. Um, so that way you can dynamically retarget everybody who visits your website with an ad. And Facebook advertising is super cheap, like maybe, you know, $10 for like a thousand impressions it could be five to $10, maybe a little more depending on who your audience is. Um, so for a few dollars a month, you can essentially 
get your brand in front of all your guests or everybody who's visited your website um, on, let's say, Instagram. And Facebook pixels are how you build those audiences. And then there are some tools where you can also upload a list of emails from, let's say, everybody who you've collected data from in the past and create an audience based on that data as well. Um, and then within Facebook, they've made the tool, like it's all self-service and they've made it easier and easier to use. Um, so, you know, we obviously walk you through how to do that, but if you do want to start building your social media presence or increase your Instagram followers, targeting people that are already aware of your brand or have stayed with you is kind of the lowest hanging fruit audience that you can go after with social media ads. Oh, Mark, do you have any thoughts on this? Particular subject? I was going to say, if anybody's think, thinking, well, that sounds cool. How do I set it up? There's a blog post, obviously, on Stayify, but Team Boostly members, we've got some specific videos in the vault of the Boostly Academy vault that you can go to that shows you a step-by-step -step on, on how to set that up. It's so powerful. It is still, still a very, very, very good tactic, even though Facebook goes crazy and Instagram is crazy at times. This is still a really good tactic because at the end of the day, you're uploading an audience to Facebook, but already know, like, love, and trust you. And what Facebook will do, because it knows everything about everybody, because we tell it everything <laughs> about us, they will go and match it to the data that you're giving to the types of people that you want to, to attract, like your ideal customer avatar. Those of you who have read the book, you'll know what that's all about. So it just makes it a lot easier to put your information, your brand, your business, your property, properties in front of people that already know, like, and love and trust you. And it's people that look exactly like that on Facebook. So it is, it's, it's a, such a powerful tool. Yeah, I definitely recommend, you know, the, the people that have already stayed with you are lowest hanging fruit and you get the highest engagement rate. Once you start venturing outside of that with a look like audience or other types of audiences, it gets harder. Um, so, you know, if you want to tiptoe into there, it's kind of like, if you think about your audiences as like kind of like concentric circles, right? The littlest one are people that already know your brand. Like that's where you want to start with. And then you can build out from there once you start seeing success. Um, and the pixel two, it does help report on like how successful your ads are. So once you, let's say, if you place a pixel on your Boostly website, you can see data on like, what then that person did on your website, right? Um, so that way you'll know if they actually like did certain behaviors or added something to a cart, all of that's definitely possible. So you can measure ROI success or in Google Analytics, you can see like everybody who clicked on the Facebook ad, like what happened after the fact or how long they were on your website for. Yeah. Um, for our StayFi, uh, you know, we always like to do an offer for people that sign up for our webinar and I'll talk a little briefly how are we doing on time okay it's 5 45 so we have a few more minutes here for questions um I'll talk about briefly how StayFi works outside of setting it up in the United States because we do work everywhere but the process is a little different in the UK or another country um but first of all you can use this code boostly to sign up on our website for a discount um and, you know, we're a self-service tool, as I like to say, and there aren't so many of these in the short-term rental industry. So some of these people are like, don't realize that it's this easy. So you can just go to our website and make an account and there's no cost to making an account. So anybody can sign in and get a StayFi account and poke around the portal and make a splash page. To set up StayFi, you do need to buy a device called an access point that plugs into your router. And we use Ubiquity Unify access points, which is kind of like the leading provider for enterprise mesh hardware all around the world. And so we can walk anyone through how to get this equipment. In the US, we sell it and ship it. But outside of the US, you can buy it directly from Ubiquity, the manufacturer. And then we go on a Zoom with you to set it up with you uh, wherever you're located. And Ubiquity has a UK and EU store. So if you want to get Ubiquity equipment, we can recommend which specific devices are a good fit for your properties. And so the way you would do that is you make an account and then you would email support and we would get in touch with you discuss what your properties are and recommend the specific devices for those homes. A lot of people already have ubiquity equipment. So I'd say 90% of people who have professionally installed Wi-Fi's in small hotels, cottages, or in large vacation rental villas, the installers install the equipment because it's the most commonly used. And then we can also use equipment that you already have. Um, so if anyone's interested, they can shoot me an email and I'm happy to walk them through how that process works outside of the US. Nice. Could you just spell the name of Ubiquity because people uh, missed that? Yes, I will put a link to the UK store so you can see all the devices in the chat. Amazing. So I just want to say 
while Arthur's is getting that, um, get getting that link, Tracy will get that for you. Um, this webinar, what we wanted to do today was to just showcase some of the tools that, that are out there and also as well, sort of just highlight the fact why it is important. Now for me, seeing StayFi go from email to added in text messaging is really exciting for me because I know the power of text. Um, I know how powerful it is. And like you said, the open rate is 98%. Why? To get rid of an email, you can just leave it in your, <laughs> you, you can leave it in your inbox. It'll just go. But if you're like me and you've got OCD and I, I can't, I can't stand to see something unread in my text messages to get rid of it. You've got to read it. That's why the, the, the rates are so high. When you open it, you go, oh, okay, let me check this out. Like I'm literally doing right now. And so this is the power of it. And by investing your time into setting up text messaging marketing, you are going to be ahead of 95% of the industry. Because this is one that so many people, if you sleep on it, then you'll just get left behind. And this is why it's so powerful. And again, we, we talked about it halfway through the, the webinar today, is that this is not just going to the booker. This is going to the whole party. So if you can just invest a little bit of time, reach out to Arthur, you know, the email is right there. Go to stayfi.com, go and sign up, have a little play, have a little double around. Um, and then we basically then you go from there, set it up. And if you do it right, and you know, you've got the support from StayFi. And obviously, for those of you who are part of Team Boostly, there's all the training and the copy has already been created for you. We've, we've, we've hired copywriters to write email templates literally for you to go in and put it all into practice. It's a perfect little marriage up. So yeah, that's what I just want to end on by saying. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, do we have that, that link, Arthur? Yeah, I put the link here. These are what the devices look like. Um, so these are all kind of the latest Wi-Fi 6, which is, I don't know, you know, more of a technical thing, but basically just like 4G, 5G for phones, there's a new Wi-Fi standard called Wi-Fi 6 that came out last year. So the other added benefit of using StayFi is obviously with new Wi-Fi 6 gear, you're just going to get a faster, better connection for all guests that are staying in the property. I know somebody asked, you know, we can do some questions now. I know somebody already asked about, um, and you can just put the, you don't have to use the questions um, uh, tab in Zoom. You can just put questions in the chat because I know we have that pretty active there. Uh, I know somebody already asked about like a motel. And so I say StayFi, you know, we definitely specialize in short-term rentals, um, but we have branched out and done like small motel, hotel installations too. Um, and that's one where it really just depends how the Wi-Fi is set up today. Um, there's a lot of different ways people set up internet, whether it's hardwiring access points or setting up wireless mesh devices. And so, you know, basically if you tell us how the internet's set up today, uh, in an email, we can tell you, you know, what the best pathway to set up StayFi would be in that building or multifamily property, uh, just depending on, you know, and then we can also recommend, hey, that's set up this way, but if you want it to be better, you can also hire someone to like wire some access points in the building and we'll also improve the internet. So we can kind of let you know what all the options are and what the benefits and costs of those would be. One final question that's come in, and this is a good one. So Jillian's got four properties. Mm -hmm. She's put, I've got four properties. I assume we need four hardware devices. How does it work with StayFi when it goes to pairing it with four hardware devices? Yeah, so you would get one device per property. Uh, and the way the setup works is you cook this device called an access point into the home's existing Wi-Fi router. Most people, because they manage on behalf of homeowners, they actually leave the home's existing Wi-Fi running. So like any of the devices that are already online there, whether it's a door lock or a thermostat, you can leave on the home's existing Wi-Fi. The StayFi device will broadcast a new guest network. That guest network will have the same name in every property. And so like brand guest network. So you can imagine you'll actually have one set of Wi-Fi instructions for all homes. You can imagine you have 10 properties instead of giving 10 different sets of instructions. Now you know you have one set of instructions to give to all of guests. And when they join that network, that's when they'll get the splash page. And then you can leave the existing password protected network to homeowner set up also running so that doesn't go away. Um, so that's the way most people would set it up in multiple properties. Amazing. Um, yes, uh, Eliza has put, can I get a replay of this? I am listening while driving. So yeah, absolutely. Yes. We yes. will make sure that a replay goes out. And Arthur's very kindly said he's going to send me the raw recording I'll get it all boosted up and we'll, we'll get it chopped up and sent out and turned into a podcast as well. So just make sure that as many people as possible can, can discover this. And this is something that I'm really ex excited for, especially people who are based in the UK and Europe who, who have never, um, 
used DeFi or heard of DeFi, I've heard of it, I've never really dabbled more into it. This is what I really want to start getting more and more people onto because I know the power of this technology and text messaging and email and listening to the plans that Arthur has next coming up is very exciting for me. So if you're part of DeFi, you're in the UK and Europe, like I say, you're going to be ahead of the majority of the market here. And it's a great way of not only collecting data, but what to do with it, increasing direct bookings, which is what we're all about. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Arthur, thank you so much for getting up early over there in, in California and 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 doing this uh, for us. Is there any final thing you'd like to say before we sign off? No, it's been fantastic. And thanks, Mark. You're amazing as usual. So my absolute pleasure. And Rasha, thank you so much for tuning in uh, in Australia, no, uh, seriously. I, uh, which, which, which is awesome. I can only imagine what time it is over there. But um, have a great day wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> We've got people tuning in from all over the world. Thank you so much for tuning in and taking part. And uh, as always, we'll be back very, very soon. Take care, everybody. Thank you, everyone.